A Virtual Tour of Lehman Caves, Part 2, Great Basin National Park, an image of the Grand Palace, fading to cave passage. Welcome back to Great Basin National Park for Part 2 of the Virtual Lehman Caves Tour. If you haven't seen the first part of the virtual tour, we recommend watching that before beginning this video. During our trip, this bat icon will pop up at points of interest. Feel free to click on the bat when it appears to learn more. If you're all set, let's resume our tour of Lehman Caves. We're continuing our journey by heading deeper into the cave, making our way toward the Grand Palace. The Grand Palace is the biggest room on the tour route and one of the most decorated areas. To get there, we will travel through the Panama Canal. It may be obvious that this section of the cave isn't natural, but human-made. We don't know exactly when this was constructed, but it was mentioned in the local newspaper, the Ely Record, in 1921 and 1922. Later, broken rocks and speleothems were stacked up, and based on the style of rockwork, it was most likely constructed by the Works Progress Administration, WPA, and or the Civilian Conservation Corps, CCC, who were both assigned to conduct work at the National Monument in the 1930s. Like the real-life Panama Canal, which provided a shortcut, this passage also provides a shortcut in the cave, leading into what we call the inscription room. Early visitors wouldn't have had the luxury of using the Panama Canal. Instead, they would have had to belly crawl through a small space called Fat Man's Misery. Those who braved the journey, feeling victorious, would take their candle, torch, or carbide lamp and hold the flame to the ceiling, allowing the soot to darken the rock to leave behind their name, initial, or insignia. But not all of the color above is human-caused. Looking closely at the ceiling, we can see more than just inscriptions. A view of the cave ceiling. In the upper right hand, you can click on the bat to learn more about microbial life. Now we continue back along the cave tour route with formations on either side of the trail and lots of popcorn. Stalactites are overhead. Ahead of us, we see a fork in the trail. We take the right hand fork, which leads us into a passage called the Rocky Road. This is an area that has seen some blasting, so the top and the bottom do not have natural cave formations on them. Instead, they are smoother. There's a handrail on the left-hand side as we go up a slight hill. Then we see some more cave draperies as we go in this fairly short passage, about six feet high. There are little pockets on the sides with more cave formations. While we ponder questions about tiny creatures, along with human impacts on the cave, let's look for clues to help us explain the natural development of Lehman Caves. We know that warm, acidic water rose to create the passageway we are moving through. But did that water erode the cave at an even pace? Were there forces that dissolved the cave at faster rates in certain locations? We can find answers by looking closer at specific features in the cave, such as this groove in the cave wall. In the upper right-hand corner, you can click to learn more about bubble trails. We turn from the wall back to the concrete trail and continue down it. It's a narrow passageway in the shape of a diamond. There are very few features here, but we can see that there are some layers of flowstone that the path has been blasted through. We see big boulders on either side of the trail. It's not only the rock in the cave that can give us a glimpse into the past. As we saw previously in the inscription room, early visitors were particularly fond of leaving proof of their journey through Lehman Caves. Surveys in search of historical inscriptions have produced remarkable discoveries in nearly every corner of Lehman Caves. In many instances, researchers have been able to trace the lives of the very people who left their names, hometowns, and the dates they visited within the cave. Each of these inscriptions have proven to be a unique component of Lehman Cave's human history. 
In the upper right hand corner, you can click on the bat to learn more about inscriptions. Leaving this area, we begin our journey towards what some would consider the most regal area on our tour, the Grand Palace. This is one of the most decorated and spacious rooms in the cave. Ahead of us is a very large room filled with cave formations. A handrail is on our right as we go down the path. Most of the room is rather dark, but some cave shields up high on the left are lit, lit up. They are round in shape with draperies hanging off them. Numerous stalactites and columns fill the room. The crown jewel of this hall is the parachute shield. Cave shields are quite rare, and how they form is still a puzzle. We get close to the parachute shield. Despite the rarity, in 2020, over 500 cave shields were identified in Lehman Caves. We turn from the cave shield and look down on the floor in an island of cave formations, stalagmites. Another noteworthy feature in the Grand Palace is this large opening in the ceiling, called a cupola. The rising, warm, acidic water tended to collect in the highest section of cave rooms, slowly dissolving the cave ceiling, creating pockets that can range from a few inches to many feet high. But there's more to this well-adorned room, like questions unanswered, mysteries to solve, and evidence of human impact. In the upper right hand corner, click on the bat for formations and lint side video. We move beyond the cave island and down a path with a pool on the left hand side. Ahead are two big columns and we'll go right in between them to a small overlook. The overlook is in the sunken garden. Despite years of study, many mysteries still remain in the cave. The sunken garden is the deepest section of the cave on the tour route, at about 235 feet below the surface. Looking down into it, we can see water that is present year-round. Snowmelt and rainwater from the surface infiltrates through the soil, rock, and into the cave, eventually finding their way down into the pools. Monitoring these pools tells us more about the cave. In the upper right hand corner, click on cave water to learn more about this water in the cave. But this space isn't only water. Visible from our overlook is the Royal Gorge, a large canyon-like route which connects the sunken garden to the Talus Room, the largest chamber in Lehman Caves. This is the turnaround point of our tour, but it's not the end. To recap, we learned about humans who left their mark, explored the crown jewel of Lehman Caves, and found spaces underground that tell us about the creation of the cave. In our next and final video, we'll explore the effects of having parties in caves, what it means to restore and preserve an area visited by thousands each year, and learn about the cave's most iconic resident, bats. To continue your adventure, click this video for part three of the virtual tour of Lehman Caves at Great Basin National Park. We hope you'll join us for the last leg of our tour. The link is in the center right-hand part of the screen.